Hey, what's going on, good people? It's Gardner Douglas, your oyster ninja, and I'm here with the oyster goddess. You know, I was gonna say it. Yeah. <laughs> and I have <laughs> Chef Julie Q. Woo! <laughs> Hi, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> so, Julie, you are the oyster. You are the oyster goddess. I mean, you actually gave me that nickname, which I I truly love. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to you. <laughs> I did, but you truly earned it. So, you know, uh, it doesn't just be, it doesn't, you don't just hand out a name like the Oyster Goddess. Seriously. That's true. That's a very serious name to give out to somebody. <laughs> so how are you making out with this COVID-19, this pandemic? Oh, well, being in Brooklyn and being in like a 700 square foot apartment, it's been a little challenging doing okay. like the self-isolation thing. But, you know, I work from home anyway, so actually it doesn't feel all that much different. But, okay. yeah, I That's miss the good. outdoors. Yeah. So where's the other superstar in the family? Oh, I'm talking about Donut. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's somewhere around here. I think he was on the couch just oh, behind me. Lounging, <laughs> you know, show. life of the rancher, famous dogs, you know. Yep, yep, exactly. So we're here to talk, well, we want to talk about you, but we also want to talk about your um, your recent blog, um, just exploring uh, oyster options during this pandemic. Yeah. So you want to reach into that a little bit? Like, what was your, uh, I guess, your motivation behind it? And I mean, you you come up with some awesome blogs anyway, but what was the motivation behind this? Yeah, you know, I mean, I just kind of remember like now, I guess four weeks ago, um, when all of the, you know, like the guidelines for self, like social distancing and business closure started popping up. Um, one of my chef friends, like literally texted me that morning. It was like, I've got so many oysters. Like, can you take them? Like, we have to close down shop here. There's no other place to go. I don't want to trash them. And so I, I really rushed and tried to rehome these oysters that would otherwise go to waste and kind of just knowing them there. And I, I remember like having to give out, try and coordinate 800 oysters to just go out to my friends, like in the neighborhood and people would just come to my stoop and pick them up. But in that moment, I kind of just realized like if they're closing down, they're like, they're one of the biggest oyster bars in New York. Like where is all this product going to go? And I think that's when I realized there that the growers are going to have such tremendous issues with business and I guess everybody including like every supply chain and every restaurant they're all having problems um so I kind of wanted to do something but I didn't know what it was right then and uh I think there were some farms that are already selling direct to consumer anyway and they started really ramping up their efforts and I was like huh I mean there's got to be some other other farms that are willing to ship direct to consumers or at least make announcements where they can do regional shipments or even local pickups. Um, and all of that communication was currently just on Instagram and it just felt really fleeting right. in a way. And like, you know, I tried to repost everybody's like announcements on my IG stories and mm -hmm. like, this is getting really tedious right. and I don't know how many people are actually going to see it. So I decided to use my obsession with Airtable, which is the platform that I'm like using to build this database uh, to create something simple where a, a grower can just fill out a form. It gets sent to me. I review the data. And if I approve it, it goes live on my website. So in that sense, like it just gives a little bit more support for the folks who are doing it. And also a good resource for people like consumers, like people who want to buy oysters, a place to look at all the options that are available to them and what makes the most sense for where they are. Nice. Um, yeah. I guess I just want to just help and also very selfishly know where I can get my own <laughs> oysters from. Yeah. <laughs> I always start source. from like, <laughs> yeah, I always start from a place of like, what would I want <laughs> as an right. oyster lover? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's the, one of the key fundamentals and, you know, I guess producing something that somebody's going to read is like, what would I read? Right. Sure. Yeah. I, I think I definitely speak to um, a niche audience you know, every, there's a lot of people who do like oysters, but they, they don't obsess about it the same way that you and I do. You know what I mean? But 
Yeah. Um, I think that when I started my blog, like almost 10 years ago, it was really hard to find that kind of content. Like I was just digging and digging and digging. There was like nothing, but you know, like a few articles here and there. So back then that's what also kind of, kind of compelled me to like go down this path of like, what can you discover and what can you share? That's, that's new. That's going to be interesting. Right. So 23, I mean, not 23, but 10 years ago, I was around 23. And I definitely mm -hmm. was not thinking about anything, reading anything oyster or even learning anything oyster. So that was probably kind of hard for you. huh? I mean, not just saying I'm the guy, but, you know, just like, what was your motivation to keep going? Or was it like, did you have like a, you know, a, a nice following back then even? Uh, you know, it, it was definitely for personal, like personal reasons to keep okay. a blog and to start a blog. Um, I had been inspired by Rowan Jacobson's book. You know, that was really what compelled me to just try and go on this journey myself to become an oyster connoisseur. Mm -hmm. And journaling photography came very naturally to me. So it just made sense to just put it out there into the world. And I think slowly it started picking up traction. I didn't really <laughs> do anything to to promote it. But when Instagram came online, I joined Instagram. That's, I think, where... Um, I started realizing that it could be, it could turn into something more than just my own perspective. I think I had then an opportunity to grow my platform and then educate and inspire other people to do the nice. same thing. And just speaking a little bit about, well, first I want to go back to your um, blog on finding the oyster farmers. Um, so you said they had to fill out a form. Like, do you are, do you have prerequisites? Like, do you have to, like, had the oyster already? Or do you just, if they seem okay? I mean, I know you probably know everybody in the industry, but, you know, <laughs> what are the prerequisites? Yeah, so I've started very small. I just reached out to the, the farmers who I am friends with, and I know that are offering uh, direct-to-consumer shipments. They've been doing it for a while, so they kind of know the process down. Um, so that was, that was good to just get sort of a, a baseline group of people into it. And then the next round were companies that I were I, like, I am kind of familiar with, but haven't bought from directly. Uh, for that, I just make sure that they give a really easy way for consumers to contact them and buy their product. And I know like launching an e-com platform, like a checkout, a shopping cart is not easy and you can't right. do it overnight. Um, so after a little bit, I did allow people to just say, okay, you can, you can buy them through the phone or through an email address. I'm trusting them to rep, like display the pricing that <laughs> they're going to honor right. on their website. Um, and I haven't seen any strangers come and fill of out course. this form, <laughs> of course. but if there was like a rando that's like, ah, oh, you know, 10 cent oysters here, I think I would immediately flag that in my head and be like, look, this is not going online right, right. <laughs> first. <laughs> no doubt. So um, have you, uh, what's, what's probably the best, because I've seen your, uh, you know, of course, on Instagram, you've posted some new pictures of oysters, which is hard for me right now because I'm not doing a lot of shucking. So I got to go back in there. And of course, I take a lot of pictures while I'm shucking. Um, so I have some stuff, I have content, but, um, since this whole pandemic, uh, I guess what are, what have been some of the better oysters you've ate uh, or, you know, Ooh. that just came in? Sure. Um, oh gosh. So I don't want to put mean, you that, on the that. spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That like, I remember the first round that, uh, chef Dave. So, it, um, the chef who I was talking about earlier is Dave Siegel from Colin Pistol. He brought me just like right from the airport kumi eyes from baja Ooh, california wow. and i love i mean you must have seen my post about kumi eyes i'm kind of obsessed with them of course um, so that was a treat and then there was some there was some like none such as from abigail up in maine there are some mookie blues that i just gave out there were a couple of duxbury oysters um and you know i i kind of sampled a couple of each and they all were really nice i mean they, they were just coming out of their hibernation mode, right? Like they're super sweet and they're super plumpy. Right. Like that was a few weeks ago and they're still holding up. So I've liked, I mean, I can't deny like just how amazing of 
the, the Pacific oysters, like a deep cut Pacific oyster is. Um, but then I'm also really partial of Maine. Mm -hmm. And I just got uh, a couple boxes of Fisher's Islands, a couple, oh, wow. um, like 50 Fisher's Islands are in my fridge right now because I did a little recipe testing for them. Yeah, I've worked with that farm a few years ago and they're just a great classic, super briny oyster, you know, really clean. So I feel like I can eat them all the time and not get sick of them. Right. So what's your cutoff date? Like, I mean, you know, as far, I know oysters probably don't last long for you, but what's your cutoff date? Like, you know what, maybe it's time to cook these instead of eating them raw. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I found myself starting to cook them maybe after, if they still last in my fridge, maybe like after a week. Okay. Yeah. Um, it depends on, it depends on the oyster when I'm opening them up, yeah. right? You can tell like immediately that this is a little too dry to really enjoy just slurping. In mm -hmm. fact, you can't slurp it right. <laughs> at all. It does it won't do it. Um, so that's when I know it's just like, I'll just flip this and pan and saute it a little right. bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let the listeners know, uh, why they should be ordering right now. I mean, I have my own reasons and, uh, I'm just gonna give my reason. I didn't, you didn't okay. ask for it, but I'm going to give it. Uh, I just think right now, like right after the winter time is just the best time to eat oysters, you know, before they start spawning and or, you know, before they, the warms, the water warms up. I just like oysters yeah. right now. Yeah, I totally agree. They do taste amazing. And that should be the first reason for anybody to, to order them. I think it's funny because when I, when all, all this started, I was like, oh, great. I better boost my immune system. <laughs> yep, yep. So funny enough, I'm like, well, this is, this could kill two birds with one stone. You're helping people out. And like, you're getting so much zinc that I'm like, this has got to be good. Like being in such a densely populated city. Like if I ever go out there and I I'm feeling something like, I just want to make sure that I, I strengthen myself as much as possible, you know? So that's like, that's funny enough, like the other reason. And I tell people that have always been on the fence about buying oysters, you know, for home, home eating and home shucking. Like, I think their biggest hesitation is, oh, I don't really know how to shuck them. I, I might hurt myself. You know, I don't know how to store them. So I think that's just, you know, I guess just also taking the opportunity right now when you are at home and you can't get them really any other way to just give it a go. And there's just so many resources, you know, online that tells you it's not a big deal. You can, you can just watch a YouTube video right, or, right. you know, look at your Instagram and just practice and practice and practice. And no one like me is judging the way that you shot. <laughs> Good time. Unless to if you post it. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw your uh, <laughs> comment on oyster obsession today about the food. oh right <laughs> you know i haven't gone on that group for a while but mm -hmm. it popped up on my on my facebook today and i just because bill bill whitbeck is you know such a sweet sweet guy and i just saw his like back and forth with with this other guy named mark and i was like what is this all about it's, right right <laughs> it was really funny it's a timeless debate <laughs> it is flip or no flips right. yeah yeah, I'm not I much. I shall have that flipper. debate later. Yeah. No. That's a whole nother podcast. That's a whole nother something. You know what I mean? You haven't covered it yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. I mean, I've talked about it with shuckers, but like specifically, I think it needs to be dealt with specifically. <laughs> Fair enough. Because some you need people to get... are not, they're not getting the point, I guess. I mean, well, you know, it's preference. So, but my preference is like if you shuck it right the first time, you don't have to flip it. Well, it's also culture, you know, I think that it is interesting in Australia that they perceive flipping to be the right thing to do. You know, it's the best way to present the product uh, like that, that gives you a, a quick read of the, the product quality. Right. It's like, well, well, in like here, it's like, it's just backwards. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. You're covering a mistake, but I don't think that that comes to mind for any Australian grower or chef down there. So it's, it's really interesting to see like every, the both sides like will justify that their method is right. I also, I guess it also goes to um, another topic is uh, the cup or the flat shell, like far as like oyster presenting, you know? Oh, sure. Yeah. That's more common like in the mid Atlantic and the right. South. Yeah. 
Yeah, I haven't I, seen that in a while though. You know, when I do it every now and then, but only for like people who I know who are, are like, you know, it's their first oyster or like just to, like if, you, if all my oysters are down in the cup, and then I throw this one up there. I sometimes I do it just to see what somebody will say, you know, just to gauge, you know, where, what their reaction is, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, you do get a reaction from it, um, especially when I'm shucking like beside a Baltimore shuck, shucker, because that's all they do is, you know, on a flat shell. Yeah. 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 But <laughs> fun times, fun times. I just miss the raw bar so much. I know. <laughs> I know, me too. So do you want to talk a little bit about your new YouTube series? Because you're killing that also. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, it's an experiment. <laughs> it looks it's like a, you're winning. Uh, thanks. It's um, so, so it, I think of it as almost like a coping mechanism okay. <laughs> for me, like not being able to travel. I actually had to cancel a trip to London um, that was supposed to happen at the end of March to go oyster farm touring, oyster bar hopping with Bobby Groves, who is, you know, my Great Britain episode. Mm -hmm. So the the new experiment is like around the world in 80 oysters. And the intent is to show people what oyster culture is all about in other countries. And that's been at the core of my fascination with oysters in the very beginning. Like back in the day when I was in the advertising industry, when I started this blog, I had you know, the opportunity to go on a pretty extensive market research world tour. So I hit up like, I don't even know, 18 cities in uh, five continents in the span of like four and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. I traveled out of a carry-on. I like, I had my itinerary packed, like it was just all doing uh, focus groups in all these different places, but wherever I went and they were all major cities, I tried to go eat oysters. And I just thought it was so interesting how each country had their own rituals, had their own perceptions of what the best oysters were. There was just no like standard across the globe. So, so for, for around the world, the 80 oysters, I think the idea would be to just try and kind of bring that all together for people to to see like, oh, we might have certain things in common or we might be completely opposite on issues like the flip or no flip. Right, right. Interesting. What was your, uh, what oyster or oyster farm was you most looking forward to? For, for what? The, uh, the oysters are, the, uh, was it 80 oysters are around the globe? The oysters around Oh the yeah, they're around. Um, well, I guess a TBD, I think, I, I'll, there's a lot of places where I haven't been and I, and I'm very curious about, and I mm-hmm. don't necessarily have current connections to. So I'm like, I have sort of a list, like a content planner database, also an air table. Right. <laughs> right. This, right. Is, this is not an air table ad. I promise. I just but love it. It could so, be. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, you know, I have like a list of the countries that I, think I would want someone to speak about but I don't have a person yet and and I think those are the ones like that I'm like you know just really have my eyes set on just to find that person um for the last few guests you know I've done four I'm gonna do another one like shortly after this and then Mm -hmm. one on the weekend everybody's so cool I can't I I I can't pick a favorite it's it's so hard it is so hard um you know i think there's places where like my first episode was brazil which i think is pretty unexpected like people don't think about eating oysters in a more or less like tropical <laughs> right, right country environment but i've been you know following felipe for a while and it's it's also cool that instagram has brought the oyster community together in that way cuz you do see people from other countries posting what they're growing and then how they're shucking and their mobile raw bar businesses and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. This is great. Well, I don't want to hold you up. I just appreciate you for taking time to speak with the Oyster Ninja podcast. No, I love it. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate so, you. I'm so proud of you for doing this. Like, hey, I was so I'm excited. just a guy. <laughs> 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 It's very cool, and I think it's much needed in in the digital space. Thank you so much. Um, I meant to say because I think I already thanked you, but 
Well, I thanked you a couple of times. I always thank you because as um, <laughs> soon as you put that blog up about um, just where to find uh, oyster catering companies and oyster shuckers, that's when I got, well, yeah, yeah, I would say, yeah, that's when a lot more people started calling me. So that gave me an oh, cool. Bump. So I really appreciate that. And, um, oh, just for just doing stuff because, you know, you keep me alive. I keep you alive. You know, we work together, make things happen. And I just really appreciate you because oh. you're killing it. You're killing it. Uh, you are. <laughs> I, try. You I are. try and have fun, you know? That's what it's like all once, about. Yeah. Once this stops being fun, I think I might move on to the next thing, but it's still a lot of fun. Right, right. Well, thank you. And um, good luck with your next interview. I know you're super busy. Well, thank you so much. Stay, all right. Stay safe. Be well. Yes, indeed. See ya. Okay. Bye. Oh, you got you got to um uh, tell everybody where they can reach you at and emails and Instagram and Twitter, oh. all that good stuff. Okay, so I'm everywhere, so it's easy to find me. But I guess the easiest way to reach out is Instagram, which is in a half shell blog. In a half shell, taken by somebody else, unfortunately. But in a half shell blog, or you can reach me at Julie at in a half shell dot com. Or in a half shell dot com, go there, fill out a form. I'm sure there's one. <laughs> All right. There. And of course, I will be copy and pasting that link of her blog in the description. Cool. All right. Be safe, Julie. Thanks. All right. Laters. <laughs>